I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing. I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. Working man Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Working Class Holes podcast. I'm your host, Ed McGowan, here in the break room with my co-host, Josh Ricardo. All right. So we have the first guest ever on this show. And when Ed and I uh, sat around thinking, you know, okay, we don't want to bring any guests in until our 10th episode. But who is it going to be? Who kind of epitomizes the working class attitude, but at the same time (laughs) is making it in comedy enough to where he could compare what it was like to work a shitty job and to now be working where he's at and where that kind of line is drawn between comedy and also the day gig. And I said, well, here's a few names. And one of those names and Ed's face lit up was James Matter. Uh, James has been in comedy for a long time. Uh, I knew him when I first moved to New York City. I've watched him explode doing exactly what he does, uh, being the most talented MC in New York City. He has two albums. One of them was voted Album of the Year by Interior Bank called The Check Spot. Uh, He's on the SDR show all the time. He's one of their co-hosts. So without any further ado, James, thank you so much for being here. Jesus Christ, consider yourself booked for my funeral. <laughs> ah, I'm great at you. No exactly. one's going to say anything better than this. I barely have any relatives left. You should goddamn... I, I, I kill you, Jesus. I see you three times a decade, too. <laughs> my, Jesus Christ. I, uh, I, I, I'm so happy I you're here, paying dude. rent. <laughs> I set you up, man. I'm here to make you oh win. My God, you I'm came emotional. in so questioning your existence. Yeah, I still am. Yeah. But we're yeah, easing it a little. I mean, like, James came in, and I've known James for so long. And he's right. We only see each other in passing, not very often. Haley's Comet. Uh, it's unbelievable. But every time we see each other, it's like it's rewound back to those moments that we've always spent a lot of time together. So when I was like, okay, I think James would do it. He's like right on point with what we're yeah. talking about. Uh, and then I saw you come in, and you're like, I, I only slept three hours tonight. I'm like, oh, this is going to be great. Yeah, yeah. I'm like Dustin Hoffman, a marathon man. <laughs> I'm going real method for this shit. <laughs> I wanted you to bring the checks box. I wanted to put it on display I know, over here. With sh- I, I wasn't going to take it from it you. I, I, don't worry about it. I was going to give oh, it back to you. Episode. I just wanted you to, you know, have your st- shit on file. Your studio is spectacular. This is everything I, I've wanted in life. I feel like you would really relate to a lot of the stuff I have, too. This is great. And then as I realized I couldn't get a power nap before I came in here, the irony of seeing the guitar and the ukulele, I decided for the first time since I saw it in the theater as a kid, Desperado, 20 minutes in, and now I am I just want to hear mariachi music <laughs> and fill criminals with bullets. All right, let me tell you something Wait a second, about Where did you see Desperado? Oh, it was on... Uh, uh, one of the, the so IFC Pluto. Pluto TV. Oh Pluto, oh, Pluto TV. Oh, yeah. I thought you went to the theater. I was like, oh, dude, that oh, would be amazing. I love going to old movies. Yeah, I'll do yeah, it right yeah. now. But let me tell you something though. Let me ask you this. This is a question I had right out of the mm. gate for the show. I've been going through a lot of personal shit, right? Cancer, some other stuff. I'm sorry, I'm, baby. Thank you, man. You're but looking I, good. Now I'm better. I'm feeling great. You're a goddamn beast. You know that. <laughs> I, I'm hard to kill. Period. <laughs> yeah. So. Maybe you can relate to this. Maybe I'm you can't. Tell you, you do the, well, I can't not. Yeah, like that. Yeah, that, and not that. That's an old, I love you, man. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's an old I needed Italian. that. Well, you Only know. you could do that, though. Any stranger doing that to me would have been. But that is like a, a years of seeing like uncles and then. Uh, yeah, uh, I always do this one. That's mine. Yes. I'm that huge, but that's, up. Because yeah. I'm a football guy, too. And yeah, that's yeah. how coaches would always approach me was like that. So yeah. I do that. Uncle Buster's got the radiation. Uncle Buster, you go. You, <laughs> yeah, it's always a, you grab a leg under or a shoulder. It's yeah. just a Dago way of doing it. And South Philly would throw like, you got this, babe. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There's a, all variations of that stem from that one thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's kind of Italian in South Philly. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Well, Ed's more Italian than anyone I've ever met. With this, with one I'm, of the most Italian people with the Irish name I've ever met is Ed McGowan. I'm like 38. percent That's a lot though in this day and age. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it's not, this, that's more than me. <laughs> Seriously, that's a lot. That's a fucking big number. Half of me is what the shit. So I had, I was doing some inventory, right? I thought, okay, and you know how the saying, either you're dumb or you're dangerous. Right? I'm dumb. I realize well, I'm I mostly dumb because now. it's just as critical. Like, because the point is, dangerous is dangerous, but dumb is just as lethal. Oh, absolutely. So I was just looking, like, I did this fucking thing, right? I'm trying to cut back on my drinking, and I got this uh, THC syrup. Okay. All right? I put it in the seltzer. I'm sipping on it. I think two servings for me and my tolerance is just fine. I take this shit. I'm trying to do the right thing. I don't want to drink anymore, but I still want to get a buzz on. I get beyond faded. Tora? I'm, oh, my God. My I, my son was... I took it four hours in advance thinking I'd be done before my son woke up from his nap so I could be a dad, you know? I just yeah. wanted a little time. 
I was in, I was like Buzz Lightyear. I was in a, on nice. another planet. And I, it hit me that I have a, I, this show is basically about how I'm dumb, not dangerous. That's the problem. I think people do that all the time, though. With the with the edibles. And it the, shits out of control. Yeah, you're now. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. People I, just pour it on everything. Yeah. They put it in the goddamn flakes. <laughs> well, you used to know like a joint, you could tell by the size of the joint. Because you're a weed right? guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crack. I, I used yeah. to, sm- yeah, well. Sorry, yeah. I just want. I didn't know if. James knew your credentials. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I, I got the spinoff podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get a hammer to come back. <laughs> in Harlem? By Ed McGowan? It's called Ready Rock. By Eddie, Eddie, Eddie Mick. Ready Rock. Uh, no, no, no. But like with a joint, like you used yeah. to know, like, right? If you take a, you would know what you, you can gauge. How, you how big me? is the joint? Never have. Oh, okay. Never so you're just, you just drink sometimes. You're I pretty, drink. Yeah. I like to drink, but I've slowed that down a bit. But uh, yeah, you mess around with those uh, hallucinogenics or anything like that? Never. So here's the thing. This is where I get square. Uh, uh, I come from a family of like addicts. Oh, so, like, okay. my mom was a yeah. junkie. Okay, oh. that didn't end too good. Uh, yeah, right. And I didn't know what heroin was, but she would watch me because my grandparents raised me, and she would get high, like smoke weed, and so would an aunt, and so would an uncle who'd watch me, and they just lay on the couch, and I'd be stuck with whatever comic books I got for the whole Dude. day till my grandma got off work. And it was always shitty Power Pack. I don't know if anyone read Power Pack in the 80s. Real sack of shit, Marvel <laughs> Comics. These four fucking kids who get power. It was so shitty after like 15 episodes, 15 issues, they'd switch powers. Oh, this will drive sales. See which one of these brats has the, the power that has a rainbow asshole. Swear to God. They would just shoot like a flying rainbow ass. I mean, you really put a lot of perspective when you're like, yeah, they were high while watching me. They just lay on the couch. And it's like, dude, I don't want to be that either. You know, that's yeah. why I try to, I never want to be high or drunk around my son ever. And I come from people that that's like a normalcy. Till you become an adult. And it's like, that no, like, come yeah. on, you know? Or they, I don't want to do that. Adult. You know, I don't want to do that. So now I'm thinking like, all right, maybe I got to get smarter. Maybe not be so fucking dumb. Yeah. But I don't know if that's going to be possible. I feel like it's ingrained <laughs> in me. Well, it's like habits. I mean, you used to be in, you were used to doing dumb stuff. Like, it doesn't even seem dumb. Yeah. Right? That's the thing. Like, I do dumb shit all the time, and I'm it seems just like, logical, though. that's the way I've always done. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't know you didn't do any drugs. Dude. I don't. I don't. I mean, I, hey, uh, I take CBD. Who the fuck? Uh, this shit? Uh, Can I go back to this for a second? Great Waylon Jennings song. It ties into this. You know, I've always done, it's always dumb, and it's what I do, right? I've always been crazy, but it's kept me. From going insane. Love it. Ooh, I love, love it. I love Jennings. it. I love That's it. another guy you want to talk love about it. dumb, not dangerous. I think he lost both his legs before Wild diabetes boy. took him. Oh, oh, really? Dude. I don't know about Wild Wild Jennings. Jennings. See, that's oh, yeah? why I love those country dudes. You know, and kind of cut from that that cloth uh, with that Roger Allen Coe guy, but then he you know, had some Confederate songs and kind of blew David him off Allen the map. David Allen Coe, yeah, yes. David Allen Coe. And there's Roger the, Allen Way, Way, which who is did the Johnny Knoxon's yes. uh, uncle, Got cousin. If you're going to be dumb... You got to be. And tough. He's wonderful. And, oh, he's a fantastic artist. But that's why I love those cool. country guys because sometimes they think they sing up they sing about things that I go, yes. Outlaw country's degraded. Is it might be even better than punk, and I think it's akin to punk. Wow. And I love it. And as yeah. I've gotten older, it has become my spirit. Uh, yes. Uh, it's my soul. I listen when I write or read in the afternoon. I listen to Mojo Nixon's radio show on Sirius XM on Outlaw, where he said the great. Can I say this? Let's yeah. just have. We're having fun. Say whatever you want. Do it. Uh, George, the great George Jones, they played him, and it was, um, I'm a one woman man, and Mojo comes back, it is the greatest DJ break I've ever heard, goes, friends, George Jones sings so well, it makes your dick hard, outlaw country, (laughs) into the next song. Might have been Jason Isbell. I don't remember. I it didn't it. matter at that point. I love it. Are you out well, of your mind? Shout out to my friend Steve Van Zandt. I think that's his, he his baby. It. Yeah, he's a outlaw. genius man. Yeah, he's unbelievable. <laughs> I, I and that oh, all right. I can I completely agree with outlaw you though. Outlaw country, <laughs> change your life, bro. And Mojo's the best. You know best. why I love it? Because it doesn't come from a place of being a victim. That's what I love about outlaw country. It's like this is some shit that happened. I made some mistakes, and luck wasn't on my side. Like that's the components for each song. I love it. It's spectacular. Oh, I gotta check this out. The yeah. good stuff is great, and there's a new movement of it. Uh, the really good people. Some of them cross over. Like Chris uh, Stapleton is a mainstream. I love that dude. He's big, but he's outlaw. Yeah, he's he not is this outlaw. Polished Nashville shit. His new single. I just sent it to people. I'm like, yo, listen to this. This song fucks. And a bunch of people got back to me going, yo, that song does fuck. Yes. <laughs> he's horse. incredible. All right, I'm in. Why call White Horse? I, I got to check Stapleton. that out. Yeah. yeah. He's, uh, my favorite of his is um, uh, that kind of like love song, but it's so good. 
Uh, we'll roll rolls out like a welcome mat. What's that one? Yeah, I don't know. It. I don't know the, the title. Oh, starting over. That's a great yeah. tune. Starting over. See, I respect and I respect all. The, you got the red shirt on, and we've met at a Ween show, Halloween, God, with you and uh, you Fiori. You guys yeah, yeah. A ween show? We just yeah. we just ran into each other at a Ween show with the great Andy Fiori. Yeah, uh-huh. I'm going yeah. with him to see Ween again this year. Yeah, I got tickets too. Oh, yeah, so what a we'll nice bump into each other. Oh, dude, I love that band. Oh, I've never heard of Ween. We're on the road, right? And we're in. The, we're, we're trying to make. I'm trying to keep him awake because we're doing one of those drives like 5 a.m. Oh yeah, like good five, ones. five hour drives. So I'm going. All right, I got a game for us. Let's uh, make a playlist with songs attached to memories, and you tell me the memory, just to kind of keep his brain engaged. Wow, that's almost like high fidelity. I love because I'm like a big high fidelity. It's a total high fidelity. Yeah, it's a total high fidelity. Are these chronological? No, <laughs> auto biographical. <laughs> <Auto-biographical>. <laughs> <laughs> like this. <laughs> <laughs> rumors yeah. I bought for someone but never gave it to them for personal reasons. Oh, that's, that's right. Dude, that's a perfect movie. Yeah. Uh, but I'm like, all right, tell me, you know, this memory about you and your wife, right? It's you and your wife, right? The oh, Ween so we concert. Had three, there was three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, but the the best though was Mushroom Festival in Hell. I play for him. And I go, dude. I, I I'm in college. I've been like a metalhead kid. I go away to college, and a kid across the hall is like playing all kinds of weird shit that I'd never heard, like butthole servers, like all kinds of cool shit. I'm like, dude, this is wild. And he goes, uh, what about this band Ween? And he's playing some uh, the, the first album, which is all over the place. I'm like, I don't know if I'm in. And I hear Mushroom Festival in Hell, which is kind of like a metally kind of like yeah. thrashy kind of thing. And I was like, oh my God, it's weird and thrash? Like, I'm so in. I love that <laughs> so record. So in. Because yeah. it's, I, I, uh, the rawness, the realness, the how weird it is. Yeah. Oh, it's what the I've never heard of Ween until he brought it up and listening to those songs. I was like, I could see why someone who was looking for like that knew their people but hadn't found them yet. Why that would speak to them. They're my dead. I'm not a dead guy, a fish guy, but I, I will go see them almost every year now. If they go. Yeah. Really? I, totally. I think so. I made that commitment. I went to both shows. Halloween last year. It was a uh, November first was not ideal for me. We don't have to go into a friend of mine died. Oh, oh, uh, I had a weird uh, ending with a female, uh, whatever, and I was in a bad place. And Andy got food poisoned or something, and I went by myself to the second night. And how was it? Some oh. old hippie kept elbowing me. I wanted to fight that. <laughs> he doesn't know. I'm like, I'm fucking not in a good place. This girl, my fucking friend, I goddamn love is dead. I want to punch you in the mouth. Andy should be here to protect me. And now, the dude's twice my size. I'm like, I'll fuck you up. I got fake teeth and Obamacare, bitch. I don't give a shit. Hey, three hours. Later. I mean, does Ween does Ween have that kind of vibe? It's like a it's like a hippie shit, right? They're like dirt bag, but they're more they're dirty dirt bag. Uh, so they, like every they, concert came to go this way. Okay. They started. Uh, they they were like always just dirt bags, and then like the fish kind of kids kind of came in. The jam oh, man kind of scene okay. kind of because the roses are free. Exactly right. Yeah. Fish covered roses are free. And so oh, that turned on a whole group a of whole, people into yeah. a whole group of people. That's yeah. like, so, uh, what is that equivalent in our business of someone quoting your joke, like Louis C.K. giving a shout out to Adrian like on a pod, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Rogan. Like yeah. yeah. It's probably the equivalent of that. <laughs> mm-hmm. so uh, say someone stealing a fucking joke. <laughs> <laughs> you steal your another, joke and give you a hat tip. <laughs> an- another three years, I'm gonna fucking go names. Fuck me for three years. <laughs> no, so seriously, right? right I'll yeah. start telling you people got my shit. That's yeah. gonna go, dude. See, you know what you got to do? You got to do a Patreon with that. You start, you do like, uh, you start yeah, teasing you on your pod, again, you know, after a while. <laughs> you don't get booked, but you make so, you can make so much. I hear that, we could say it, right? You know, Kevin want. Brennan, I believe, just does live streams, and someone will be like, I'm going to give you a hundred bucks, talk shit about so and so. He's a bug, boom, boom, hundred. Walks away with a grip from what I understand. Wow. Doesn't do stuff. Why would you? Well, I don't I mean, know if he can sustain that forever, but if you can just do that. Well, yeah, that's the wow. thing, though, right? If you know he does that and you're a well-known comedian, you don't really want to be around him. So there's no more stories to be told after a while. But he doesn't but want to be around anyone. That's He'll true, just make too. Shit up. Oh, then I love him, but he's a <laughs> fucking curmudge. <laughs> uh, I want to jump into jobs right away since I have James here. Yes. So let's just Doctor. start this off. Uh, first of all, before I get into the job part, actually, let's talk about Check Spot. You, I mean, it debuted number one. Yeah. How'd you come up with that idea? Because then you have what? No segues before that, correct? Yes. And now, so Check Spot, I heard a lot about that one. A lot of your boys, a lot of our friends, a lot of people really well known in the business posted about it. Very nice. Uh, and had your back. What gave you the idea? How? What was the struggles of recording it? And can you give the audience a little bit of the premise that way they can go out and buy it? Okay. Uh, once again, Jesus Christ! I, I, you're on retainer. You're spectacular. <laughs> this is insane. So. 
Um, pre the, uh, the the troubles, the pandemic, um, New York, I was mostly working at New York Comedy Club, and they started having the host stay on during the check spot. For people not familiar with the check spot, it is mm-hmm. it's a, it is dying. And I I'll tell you this, and I'll come back to it. It should, it should it's die. An awful it's thing. time to go away. But uh, the host would stay on. This is when everyone gets their bills. The show gets unfunny, and they pay an extra few bucks to do it. I had, uh, for lack of a better term, a trick of how I dealt with it from when I was coming up and had to do them mm-hmm. or host at places where I did it, where I just do a QA. and a It forces people, as long as you get two people to pay attention to ask a question, slowly everyone comes. Mm-hmm. And I started to have fun with it at New York and felt myself being very creative because I liked my first record, No Segways, uh, and it was important to get an album material out because people didn't think I had material mm-hmm. and one of those people might have even been me hey guys <laughs> and so it was great but I remember listening back I'm like it's kind of just scratching the surface of who I really am I didn't really pull the, the son of a bitch out of drive or third gear whatever yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah, drive yeah. stick um, so <laughs> I was step. like let's just start recording these and we recorded them and then the pandemic hit and then finally after a few months I'm staying in the middle of PA Suburbs of Philly, uh-huh. uh, Collegeville, fun. America's okay. Playground, okay. with Soul Joel and his sister and her sister's harem of kids. I'm in a basement. I can somewhere do two to five shows a week, depending on the weather at his outdoor venue. God bless him having that thing. Yeah, dude. And I'm just trying to, okay, what's next? What's next? I know we have these recordings. I listen to them. I send them to my boy, Shuley, formerly of the Stern Show, who mm-hmm. I moved here from. He goes, you've got something raw. You've got like a day the laughter died here. I sent him to my record label. We tiptoe around the tulips for months. Months! Basically says he doesn't think he can get played on the radio. He's got, a, this is his living. He thinks that if we, yeah, he, it, he thought it was gonna be tough. He's like, I'm proud of it for you, but I got a memo from Sirius of all the things they don't want, and this is it. Oh, wow. <laughs> and oh, I, my it's, God. Yeah. it's like four checkboxes of like the list. Yeah, <laughs> yes. you're hitting them all, yeah. But part of the reason, so I, one of the reasons why I also want, I go, well, I'm going to do it. I'm going to put it out. Dolomite is my name came out. Inspiring. I, I loved Ruby yeah, Ray Moore anyway. Bet on yourself. I'm talking to Emilio at New York Comedy Club. He's like, we'll put it out. So I'd ask for permission. He's like, you'll be our first uh, comedy act on Pinch Records. Huge. Oh, dude. But he's like, and then right when this happens, the clubs start opening. He's like, why don't we record more? Boom. Just worked out then. And so we did a whole weekend where I'm hosting, and we just filmed and recorded those. Oh, yeah, uh, the great Nick Angelo Frankenstein the album. And then finally, after like months, we put out like the movie documentary. We wish we would have done more interviews, and maybe one day we can revisit something like that to go full on with the whole thing. So we did the check spot, and that's where it is. It's very nice to win an award. I had COVID on New Year's, and then my last day of COVID, I find out we won, and it felt like, okay. What'd you win? Be, well, just, just to tell people we're about of the year. That's it. That's great. But for being yeah, told, that's great. and my record, God bless Barry at Comedy Records. He's awesome. He's great. He did what was best for him. And mm-hmm. he, when I saw him last summer in Montreal, he started. To, he introduced me to people. This guy put out a dope record. He's proud. He's supportive. But it was the best for his business. But it also felt it was a punk rock project. Yeah. It felt like being Lou Reed in the Velvets. That's cool. It, which is I wore a Velvet Underground shirt at the premiere party. Uh, the fucking, I wore a Neil Young shirt when we filmed it in a, in a print sign of the Times. Two guys who got told fuck you and fuck you back to record labels. You have to do what you have to do. Yeah. It felt, Wasn't and I had no ill will towards yeah, Barry. Yeah, it's not personal. It, I'm it glad it, it happened that yeah, way bro. because it, it, that's what this kind of project is. Yeah. And it needed to be. Well, that's why I'm bringing it up because I love, you know, headlining for so long in terrible places. The check spot is awful in general as the headliner it's disgusting eat it. you know to eat it i had to make bits after the first few years of regular headlining where i'm like all right well for these five minutes when this check gets dropped i'm doing this throwaway bit and essentially i would wish i would have came up with q a because at yeah. least i could roll with my crowd work into yeah. a bit after right. i do the fucking q a but that's why i was like oh that's a great idea i'm so happy that you got to do that man that's amazing yeah i'm proud of it and then now i can't stress it enough Fuck the check spot. They shouldn't exist. Yeah. Kill, <laughs> kill the check spot. The weekend before I got passed at the cellar, did my first spot five days after recording it. No check spot. Yeah. There's no, the place doesn't burn down every night. <laughs> and I go, this is, yeah, we don't have to do this. And then I'm old school. Um, they started paying fucking comics to do it. Maybe they should have. 
Fuck you, crybabies, for your 15 bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. especially now, because they're not even trying to get better. It's... Uh, they want to use it for the clip. Oh, now. my God. It's just clip, 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 oh, clip. Yeah, clip. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. the check spots are just clips for guys who aren't really there. There should be a license for comedians to get clips. I like, agree. Like, just like yes. driving yeah. and yeah. fishing and hunting yeah. and playing... You can't just go to a tennis court in New York City and start banging a ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need a permit. <laughs> yeah, and Wimbledon's going to put it on the Jumbotron? No, yeah. it don't work that way. Get the fuck out of here with this shit. There's no need. You just do the checks at the end. You you do hire these guys called security. They help out. Yeah. It, it helps the economy. Yeah. You're hiring a couple yeah, seriously. people. Seriously. Yeah. Seriously. It's a trickle effect. Yeah. It's it's crazy. Just It's do like it. how much faster are you turning over that room? Really? I don't think it's five minutes. I just think it's one of those things that has been around for so long that people have a hard time seeing it without it, even though it makes the show better. But I found like I've known a guy who was in comedy for 30 years as a booker and he would have this show he booked and he was married. You've done this gig before. I'm not going to say it, but uh, he was married to this five minute part of the show where you, the host before the headliner does five more minutes. Mm -hmm. And it was included in the host time. And I'm like, I don't need the host Stupid. to do five minutes before me. Just let me go do my thing. Yeah, right. You know, like, why would I bring a feature that I know, like, how his act or her act is so I can bounce off that? Right. I mean, this is a planned thing I'm doing here. I'm not just showing up with my little fucking knapsack and stick. I'm going to bust somebody over there with a fucking steel <laughs> chair when I come just in. Just got here. off the fucking train. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get car. off the Rube truck. <laughs> like a hobo in Mad Men. <laughs> Remember that episode? Yeah, I'm gonna write. What's that Mark? she writes on the wall? <laughs> not a kind man lives here. That's the not a smart comedy guy. That's what's this? That's Father Ent Tentola from The Sopranos. <laughs> yeah, Father Phil. Father Phil Tentola. He's a hobo. The and you're a priest. Fuck it. <laughs> uh, so what? Do you, what's your job for us today? What? What's our? What's our? One of your old school jobs that we're going to talk about today—a shitty situation. All right. So job. what's the Give shittiest? It to me. I mean, I waited tables. That's a big shocker. I, mean, <laughs> I, I did that for years. My family owned a restaurant. My grandma grabbed me. Goes, baby, don't ever get into this industry. Yeah, yeah. Don't. It's the worst, it sucked right? my it's family worst. apart. I mean, she's telling me this. I'm like a child. <laughs> she's frying meatballs. <laughs> but take this apron. <laughs> he's got his baseball glove with a with a baseball. He's like, hey, don't ever get into this. It's miserable. Yeah. yeah. It's it's <laughs> halftime of the West Coast game on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Niners are up two touchdowns. Montana got hurt. And he's like, baby. Um, and then I ended up doing it. Because you know it pays yeah. bills, it's quick money, yeah, it's and it cash got money. me through yeah, college, 100%. and it got me. I did it for ten years, man. Yeah, it got me to the point I'm at now. You know, it's waiting tables. So it was it always like that before you started stand up. Picked up for you, you can make your living solely off stand up. Yeah, but it took me years. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I got to the point where I was only waiting tables about three days a week, then two days. That asshole manager, this chooch your fucking ruin. <laughs> Look, I'm not an upseller. You know why? Because I try to practice what I preach. I. I don't mind it now. I hate it. It was like, w would you like to go with the Bahama blah, blah, blah? <laughs> yeah. And the beep, beep, beep. Shut the fuck up. I want a goddamn beer, a water, an iced tea. I want the steak rare. I want fucking this. Yeah. All right? I want oil, uh, vinegar, salad. Move on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, would you like to add crispy blah, 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 <laughs> for yeah, th yeah, No. Yeah. No, I don't know what the fuck I want. Now I want to get wine and dine. Uh, well, now that you, like, have a little more and a little more life experience yes. you understand why people listen to that shit I get the game right? but I hated doing it it was a punk oh, rock it's shit the, it's the worst so I, my sales were shit yeah. and this fuck face would give me the worst section so you pick up your sales pick up your sales I'm like you know I'm one of the best servers yeah. like motherfuckers leave Loving this son of a bitch. Yeah, right yeah, yeah. And he put me in the worst section around the bar and I go just so you know if you think this is going to get rid of me or whatever Schedule me in the dish pit. I'll walk with a C note during the day. I just want you to know that. For a just lunch. Put, yeah, a lunch. Put me put me in the dish pit. I'll, 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 I'll get 75 at worst one day, and I'll make sure to get a buck 20 the next day. Like, don't worry about it, pal. But whatever. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to make my ends. Yeah, you, yeah. you have nothing to do with this. Yeah. Yeah. I so See, a, okay. what kind of restaurants though? What, what are we talking about? Now? Mostly themed restaurants. Yeah, like, well, like Fridays. Him. You're like a TGIF I did all, guy. I did like the Hula Hands, the oh, Fridays, yeah. the Red Robin. I did all of those. So yeah. let me ask you this then, because this is part. You know, I've dealt with a lot of office gigs because I. Oh, yeah. But I'm talking. This is where I knew I needed an office gig. This is similar to what you're talking about. My dad did a bring your son to work day shit. He worked. He ran the ramp at Southwest. He was all the bags. Oh yeah. Him and his boys did it, and it was one of those gigs at the time you could have like a felony and get the job. Oh right. Yeah. So yeah. these guys would like 
these were not like, upstanding guys. And my dad's out there just smoking grits. And he tells me to get in. Great the, term. And it's like, uh, it's like, hey, get in that. He's, uh, literally, the, 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 this is how crazy it was in the 90s. The customers can see him. And he's just out on that ramp smoking mar next to the, the planes fueling up. He's <laughs> wearing his blue coveralls. He's smoking a grit. And he looks at me. I'm, I might be 12, maybe 12. The, a climb up. The, you have to climb up this uh, the conveyor belt. It's like, get up the conveyor belt. Get in the, the hatch or whatever. So it's just me in this hatch. Of and the he, plane? Of the plane. It's bring your son to work day. This so I get to do the job with place him. place to, to bring son to this work. This is nuts. So he's, and it's before they put a weight limit on your bag. So people are putting cinder blocks in their luggage. So they're sending him up the conveyor belt. I'm 12. He's like, fucking move it to, like he's screaming at me. <laughs> he's like I'm one of the dudes, he's right? working. And then when it's done, he's like, let's go out front. So this guy was just, ever, after every plane he loaded, him and his buddies are out looking at trim in the front of the airport, <laughs> drinking coffee, smoking cigarettes until 10 p.m. He starts at 5 a.m. Finally, I told my mom, I go, I'm never doing that. I'm, I'm never working in a fucking, on a, like manual labor. Yeah, right, and then right. he used to make me come back. They Somehow, some of the weights fell off the plane, apparently. So like, oh, now we got a weight room and a hangar. They found this <laughs> hangar and I, before football season started. I'm lifting weights with this former felon <laughs> in the fucking hangar. <laughs> so how do you deal with men? Like, that's what's funny about working class jobs. Is like Josh my, doing dips? It's I mean, it's like, it was like Alcatraz. It was, it was San Quentin hangar. So how do you deal with men? Like, in a working class job, you can tell someone in your, like your manager to go fuck himself. That's one thing I did notice about my dad's job. He had a superior that was... Because there's always that one guy that's supposed to talk to the animals, right? And then that one guy has to go talk to, like, the suits. Oh, you right. You know? Yeah, so there's always yeah, that one yeah, guy that's... the cutoff man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, right, right. The one guy that spoke our language. Right. You know, that guy would have to go talk with the suits. That guy, I remember my dad and that guy getting into the arguments just the day I was there, just screaming at each other. <laughs> Bring your sons away. And then, they would have, and then they would go have beers afterwards and get drunk. <laughs> so when you have a manager issue like that, are, are you openly defiant, right? And getting away with it. I talked shit a few times. I went and told people some issues sometimes. I guess I was a whistleblower at times with it. I mean, if I felt like you were going to brush me out, if it's you or me, it's not going to be me, yeah, motherfucker. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I cover my... And when you do that, then they feel the heat. But there was a thing. And then he tried to be my friend. He, look, it's just survival. This poor son of a bitch wanted to do something else in his life. This guy, a lot of these guys. Oh, those managers? And that's what I never respected yeah, yeah, about yeah. those kind of chain places. Yeah, exactly. That middle management, they're never getting to GM. Oh, they don't dude. promote you from that. It's dude. so rare that you make it to GM. So I was always like, dude, you have more to gain by being my friend as your subordinate. Well, that was, I was friends with a lot of those. It was because we would just do drugs. Like, I, I mean, a restaurant, <laughs> the, those restaurants, man, it's like half of the people are just doing drugs. Yeah, yeah. You know absolutely. what I mean? Especially those managers. That are just, they're there for like six, seven years. They don't know what they're doing. They're like drug addicts. You yeah. know what I mean? They're, they're just drug like, addicts. They're banging the hostesses. Yeah, I don't know go. what's going on in the last five years with <laughs> shit. How the fuck that's getting allowed. That used to be one of the perks. <laughs> was banging the hostess. <laughs> yeah, I'm, not, I'm just speeding yeah, through. No, it is. No, yeah. absolutely. I'm, I'm not so pumped that they hired an no. attractive girl at your job. I'm He's, not, yeah. And I'm not saying real... it's right or wrong, but I'm telling you. Yeah. It's, oh. It was a way of life. Like the great Chris Laker. Used to say, "Do you want the truth or do you want a bedtime story?" Okay, <laughs> miss you, Chrissy. Yeah, this, buddy, this it's is fucking the best. real. These guys all oh. were banging and wife at home, Guma on the side, <laughs> plus little Tracy. She's gonna be an actress soon. <laughs> She's gonna help us out Monday through Thursday lunch it's shifts. I hang around literally quite a bit uh, in those those restaurants. It's really funny what you're saying because a lot of those dudes that work at those restaurants, they gotta really watch where they step because sometimes someone's girl comes in that shouldn't be talked to but those guys it's like their playground it that restaurant becomes your those oh, kind 100%, of jobs 100%. yeah those guys those those middle manager guys that's they're just there they're it's a party man yeah they're giving away the bar when they're whenever they can they're you know what i mean they're up in the thing doing lines like it's just <laughs> yeah yeah it's all of that right so like if you're partying with those guys like that middle management those guys i you know they're like hey dude they're, you know you gotta that matters. You gotta start running. You gotta start, you gotta start running these potato skins. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, a, he'll give you the inside track. Yeah, like, hey, do me a favor. I just run a couple up. apps for someone else. <laughs> yeah. So, I know this is about the shitty ones, but here's an example of a good. You bring up like these guys, partiers. Margaritaville was my last job in Vegas. I was able to save money. 
Uh, Whoa. I mean, that music it terrifies me to this day. Yeah, God man. bless you, Jimmy Buffett. You did your thing. The I mean, songs in themselves aren't horrible, but God damn, when you hear them 18 times a day. <laughs> oh, dude. Purgatory. And so I saved enough loot so I could move out here. Um, I was told when it opened, I came in like four months after the opening. And this is before it became the, the corporate aspect and the union aspect really cleaned it up. But boy, Sodom and Gomorrah yeah. at that place, the managers, it was wild. And there was one day in December, I picked up a Friday just to get an extra couple bu bucks during the day. They opened up the, the upstairs outside. They didn't expect it to be a nice day. They figured it would be there for two hours slow. Two servers, one busboy, no runner, one bartender. <laughs> hit like a high school kegger, crushed. The, the bartender had to start grabbing tables. The busboy's running. The bartender, uh, the manager ends up bartending, was not so secretly fucking that bartender. <laughs> She's, they're flirting the whole time. So we're swamped. I'm going. I'm, I'm just t I'm telling him the orders. He's like, and what else? And I'm joking. I go, a perfect margarita. I go back. I'm just getting to strike a bike. He goes, there's your margarita. I haven't eaten. <laughs> He's looking at me like, bitch ass, you're going to drink this. I made it. I'm your manager. I'm, I drink it empty. I'm fucking lit. Running nine tables. No runner. It just, like, I'm toying with jumping onto the strip and dying. And he's drunk. And then we get caught up. There's no bartender or manager. I think they went and fucked out of victory for 30 minutes. And that's, I mean, like, this is how crazy that. And then after I moved here, I, I was told it wasn't the same anymore. <laughs> you know what's so great, though, is, like, you fucking did something. If I remember in those moments and those kind of jobs feeling so accomplished. And it's nothing. You don't get a raise for that. Like when you when you make like a thing, like a we just saw a problem and we made it work. Yeah. You're in an office, you're getting a bonus for that. You're getting some kind of cash of value. But you this, walked you walked with a bit with a fat pocket after that day. I mean, probably like a hundred fifty. But was it like oh, the really? hassle? Oh, four that's four it. Hours, four but, hours, yeah. Okay. I mean I could I mean that job was good. I mean, if you closed Saturday night and were the food runner, you could make but I always traded out of those. So I could do stand up. I could be like make three fifty and shit. I mean, if but I would have really worked night shifts consistently and shit, oh, you could make some loot. Yeah, yeah. But this but here's the difference. Here's the difference with the restaurant gig. You're walking out with that cash like that yeah. straight cash, homie. and you're and you're going and you're just it's yeah flying out of your pocket. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, just yeah. you like, dude. I had the craziest day, and it is just flying out of your pocket. Where like when you do that at an office job. That's coming as a bonus and a check. You're getting that two weeks later when you're a little more sane, a little more sure. sensible. Yeah, but that's yeah. changing now. What's that? Because everyone's paying with their phone and, uh, with and the, the card, with now. the credit card. Yeah, right. Those, yeah, you don't have the cash. Yeah, anymore. it's really yeah. a dying thing now. What? Uh, okay. What's the worst? I remember in gigs where they would in the beginning where they would give me like here's five hundred cash, and it was cash. Yeah, I remember being like, well, I'm gonna fucking spend this. <laughs> There's no way. So that's kind of similar, like with. Oh yeah. So I guess the segue for me, is there any gig you've had comedy wise that you could align with that kind of feeling, you know, like a shitty gig? Cause the point I'm trying to make is Ed and I have talked about this before where sometimes we're on some of our gigs and we're like pulling some kind of cable somewhere or some kind of horse shit. And he's like, is this better or worse than waiting a table? Like I'm trying to, I mean, the comedy part makes everything, the stage, it makes everything better, no doubt. But I'm talking about everything leading up to that moment. Buddy. As a professional. I'm still doing gigs that if the if the extra zero wasn't there, horrible. It still is, but there's an extra zero now. Yeah, yeah. Thank God. Yeah. I do some privates and some fundraisers now where I help auction away things. It is not what I got into. Sure. I, there's elements of me being me, like because I really don't know what to fuck it do. I still like to curse way too much. I got to be clean as a whistle. And in the, in some moment, some ad lib, while trying to raise money, something fun comes out of me, and I'm I, and that keeps me feeling it's artistic. But I mean, hey, uh, can you raise money for battered children today? Um, be funny, but also make sure they spend money and don't make anyone cry. So what kind of, it's tough. Yeah. And you feel well, like. Now it's our job now. That's the difference. It's like we're not in it for the artistry. We just try to find where we can find it in, in earning the money to the, stay afloat. The right? money's great. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like I said, I could find a, some morsels of doing something unique that feels good that I didn't, wouldn't do if I just grabbed the mic and said, hey, how is everyone doing tonight? Like that mm -hmm. horse shit. Right. But there's still always aspects of it. You just hope that. It pays better and that you feel better about yourself when you go to bed. But I mean, if 
these are some of the things I've done are close to the things I did five, 10, 15 years ago. That was for 200 bucks if I'm lucky. And you went home going, I am the whore of Babylon. <laughs> like it's, it's absolutely, it's, I mean, almost anything you do for money that's horrible in this business, you feel like one of two things. You feel like Marky Mark trying to get the erection in Boogie Nights <laughs> before the hate crime happens. <laughs> and you kind of feel like Marion uh, has to ask in Requiem so she could get she could get her fix. It's, uh, you've, I mean, I do Soul Joel when he was managing me, God bless him. We drove the middle of nowhere. He doesn't tell me I have to work. It's all these farmers. They're, they are. 98% of the audience, in quotes, looks like American Gothic. It's hard, the painting, you know, with the farm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's real life. I'm like, this yeah. This wasn't bullshit that I painted. <laughs> it was bombed so hard. No mic. No mic. They wouldn't laugh. I'm getting mad. Is it outdoors? Indoors. No Speaking mic. of outdoors, we drive right home. <laughs> I've never... The Bible didn't have rain like this. It was, <laughs> it was absolutely. If, let, let's go to another PTA movie. It, it, if, if frogs would have fallen like Magnolia, it would have been better. It was. We were going PTA to die. So good. I'm like Joel. We cannot die with that being the last gig. We cannot. We can't go out with that piece of shit. And at the time, I think it was a good. It's probably a couple hundred bucks, maybe even three or hey, four. And at dude, that point, yeah. that felt yeah. Yeah. huge. You couldn't take. I mean, oh my god, to do some <laughs> shit like that. Yeah. Fuck off. I'm it, telling you. But you're up there because you need three or four. I mean, I think I might have still had the day job or might have just stopped. And so that's a huge oh, grip. Oh, you cannot walk away from 200 bucks when it's your job now. Yeah. 200 bucks is oh, a dude, lot. It's everything. Gig, I'm you know, still, 200 bucks to me, that's, that's a good great. gig. Yeah, yeah, that's a good gig, yeah. man. Yeah. Hey. Um, you got a gig? You got a gig story? Uh, comedy gig? Yeah. I mean, all you my comedy You got a job? Gig. What do you got? All, all my comedy gigs. Are, I, I was thinking like about drugs. What do you got? <laughs> yeah, what do you I was thinking about this. I was thinking about this. Have you ever been fired from a job? Or like ever been fired? Okay, uh, in TV I have like TV? warm up, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's a fun one. Oh, I didn't think about that as an aspect. That's not a day job. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. Okay. It doesn't feel good. Uh, yeah. Last time it happened, um, I had a cold. Could have been early COVID. I don't know. It was that year, and uh, it was the day of my grandpa who raised me's birthday. Uh, who's no longer with us, so I'm emotional. Uh -huh. And they, I got the call, and the guy who replaced me is a snake. He probably had something to do with it, and he's a real motherless fuck. Oh, and I man. just sat there stewing fucking mocos coming out of my nose feeling like a runny dog shit miserable mis miserable those the extra five days would have been like 20 grand oh i didn't know we were gonna be shut down that really would have helped oh it was right before the shutdown right yeah. before I'm, I'm lucky they gave me half day pay for that day but i knew that the they fire you mid-shift for those huh if they want to if they can uh the first day was horrible and then the second day we figured them out but the third show Crowd was a little tired. It was the same audience for three shows. That's ne Here, e executives, if TV ever exists again, I'm not bullshitting you. Save your money. Just just whatever. Send them back. D don't do three. You yeah, think you're saving yeah. it. The third show stinks. It's just not possible to like three shows, especially if it's not Wheel of Fucking Fortune yeah, or something yeah, they've been yeah, sucking yeah, its right. dick yeah, up for yeah, ever. Yeah, you got to have it. It has to resonate real hard for them to sit for three. We made the adjustments. It went great, but I could tell. And then they left, and then I did reaction shots, and I felt natural. I was being very biting to these young millennial sods, oh, and it was great. And I felt like a victory, and then I got a call on the train. Ah, we're out. We might stay in tomorrow. We'll pay you for it, but they want to try something. The executives want to try something different. Everyone else is fighting for me. I got the call about 6 p.m. that day. Sick, miserable, wanted to jump out of my window. It was only four floors up in Bay Ridge. And so that that is yeah that's yeah. I've been fired or just not brought back from warm up that happens all the time yeah yeah, yeah. that's Get, that's part of the game though for that for warm up but getting fired like it always that's I was thinking about this like how how many times have I gotten fired most most of the jobs I've left gotten fired and then a few that I've quit and then there's oh there's like three or four that I just never went back to so that's, you just that's no such no call a no show forever just forever. Like, oh, don't wow. even Name pick up the them. last Name check. Name one of them. Yeah. Uh, this restaurant in Manhattan. It's on 51st it. Street. I didn't go, but I just disappeared. I woke up 
uh, from a where were you at in your life though so they have a context i was blackout drunk i woke up i was <laughs> i was driving way to leave out the the pertinent info <laughs> i was driving around greenpoint with these with these polish guys and uh <laughs> see and my dog and we were like i i hit somebody in the middle of the night it did like a hit and run we were like on these docks drinking vodka out of just just guggling and i i wake up and i'm like oh, i gotta go to work today and my dog is like licking my face in the car the polish guys are gone my wallet is gone i'm like <laughs> I'm not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this job. I'm not going to this job. And then I just never went back. And then uh, I didn't even file. I didn't even get like a W two. Uh, when you file your taxes, I yeah, forget yeah. which one's day job and which one's us. Now. W four. W four. Ten ninety nine's us. W two yeah, right. is W two is jobs. Is jobs. Yeah, 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 yeah. jobs. And uh, four is what you fill out. Four is what job. you fill out. W yeah, two. Yeah. And I never even got that. And I remember calling. I was like, Hey, uh, I never got my W two. They're like, Hey, man. Are you okay? <laughs> wow. You just never, I was like, yeah, no, I moved. <laughs> I just For a did. guy that didn't show up I to work, move. you're super thorough <laughs> <I> about, <moved. laughs> what about if, your filings. <laughs> now, with this job or any of the others you've left, if you just showed up, what would the vibe be if people still like, worked there? I just showed oh, up like I a week later. You put the uniform on and just, just show just now. Let's just film show. you. Would there be good blood? Would there be like like bad blood? Would there be good vibes? If turnovers someone... too high, they're all gone. They're, no one remembers. Yeah, all those owner, those man, middle managers. It depends on like that old Friday's job. I could totally that Friday's job that I was doing coke with the middle manager. I could totally. You always got to place here, Eddie. Put the stripes on. <laughs> grab the suspenders. You always got to place here. <laughs> Fucking Friday. I once got fired from a job where I had, I got four minutes, I could finish it in four minutes. I was a girl at the front desk. I came in for the interview, making eyes with this girl. I just started comedy with Ray Combs Jr. in San Diego, La Jolla Comedy Store. <laughs> you know Ray, right? Uh, and he's like, dude, we gotta get a website. This is 05, like, oh, wow. we gotta get a website. So spent, we spent all this money on a website, Got found this dude. The guy took like professional photos of us, super cheesy, but like we got a website. And then he's like, man, you know what's really popping right now are these blogs. People are blogging. And I go, all right, I'll blog. He goes, yeah, man, but you got to say crazy shit in these blogs for people to read them. So I ended up sleeping with this girl, and I just started, like, I disguised the names, but I was writing. You're like Bukowski. <laughs> I just started, I disguised all the names. <laughs> They're all Tremansky. I didn't ever, I didn't ever make it completely... <laughs> True, like I, I, everything Trace was true and that it happened, but you know, I was building around it and they ratted me. Someone found it, I guess. One of these people, it was before Google, so they, they didn't know you. I had it. They found me, it got tracked back to you because it was a plate. The workplace, someone at the workplace followed me. Well, not followed, but found the website, Dude, found the blog. You had so many haters, bro. You, I had a you lot tell of people didn't stories like on me. this pod. Yeah, a lot I'm of people like, don't like me. People just fucking <laughs> just. <laughs> Coming for you, dude. You're a good looking uh, kid. Bring it all. But you know that. You're, you're a good looking kid and you're fun, and that makes people hate you. And I bring it all. Like, look at you. You're aging great. Thank you. I, I can't imagine it. at 78 you're not going to look good. <laughs> like, so people hate the good looking. You know, I'll take it. But it was like they had to have a whole. They, I wouldn't go. <laughs> I wouldn't go. Yeah, like, what do you prove? I wouldn't go. Prove it. Uh, yeah. And they had to pay me. To not to, to leave, they had to pay me to leave. Huh? I said I'll, I told the guy, I go, I'll, I'll, the whole company didn't want me there because they because they spread the word around the whole company, right? Right. So the whole company didn't want me there. That that's what was related to me, and I was like, I don't care. I'll show up every day on time, and I'll be here to work. <laughs> so they go, we'll pay you for the week. Just sit at home, and I go, that's not good enough. Like I'm gonna need to. So I had to have a huge meeting with the heads of the company, and oh, that's uh, I'm probably about twenty. Three, three, oh, four. The um, balls. You love, love them, it, dude. baby. You look Buck Owens. You got the tiger by the tail, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but that's like, who's that guy from the Mets that's still getting paid? Bonilla, Bobby there's Bonilla. There's a lot of players. I think there's another Mets. There's a lot of players who did that. Uh, it, who, fucking Bobby Bonilla. Yeah, just pay me layer. It, it's like an old Shylock way of doing shit. It, 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 it's it, a way to accumulate interest. It's, it's, it's beautiful. unbelievable. And then you can just be a jerk off the rest of your life. You can make bad oh, yeah. business decisions. And they're yeah, like, oh. You made that one good one. You could be a failure your whole life and still be a winner. July 8th, I get paid $2 million every year. It's, it's the thing of fucking Until I'm 65 or whatever the shit is. This is great. <laughs> James, plug where you're at. Give us all the deets. Well, the website, I think, kind of is up. It's uh, We're finishing it up. The, that's James Mattern. The James Mattern on Instagram and YouTube. You can watch the Check Spot documentary thing. You can go to pinchrecords.com. Get yourself a nice vinyl. 
of hell yeah of uh, the check spot. It's really dope that way. Um, or listen on Spotify or whatever you want to buy it, and I get the eight cents on uh, digital. Good for you. Please Good do for it. us eight cents. He's we worth all it. need it. The way things are going. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So uh, yeah, that, I think that's it. Awesome, Eddie. Go ahead. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Edmagown Comedy. Awesome. It's a good fucking name. Love it. JoshRicardo.com, at Josh Ricardo. Do us a favor. Rate us five stars, all that stuff. Uh, James, thanks again, man, Guys, for being our first. Dude, a lot so of fun. Good having you. A this lot of fantastic. fun. And I didn't realize you've done a bunch of episodes. <laughs> and then it's like, you're our first guest. Welcome back. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Welcome back <laughs> to the first episode. And now it's IC, says the blind man. And it's great. Thanks, man. And now I'm going to play some... Um, desperado riffs on your guitar. Yeah, I'm going to let him break it over my head like Honky Tonk Man, everybody. Take it easy. <laughs> you can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can follow us on Instagram at Working Class Holds. Also, make sure you watch the full show on YouTube. All you got to do is type in Working Class Holds. And please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on.